looking back on 65 years of KOCO, from the very start, the station's founders emphasized the importance of embracing our differences. And Mecca, you look back at some of the people who led the way at KOCO when it comes to diversity. Yeah, it's part of our very foundation here at KOCO. This has always been a station dedicated to every person who makes up our community. Now I'll look back at how KOCO paved the way for a huge section of our community that was ignored. This is Five Alive News. Looking back, it was a time of unrest and violence. In the 60s, race relations seemed to be spiraling out of control. Segregation, a focus of much of the struggle. The fight for justice and fairness, an ongoing battle. In Oklahoma, no different. A race riot in the 20s, sit-ins in the 60s, and no faces resembling minorities on TV telling their stories. But that would soon change, and it happened by chance. I was working at uh, Opportunities Industrialization Center here in Oklahoma City, and my boss wanted me to talk to one of the television stations about providing training so that we could uh, train our clients. This led Joyce Jackson to KOCO. Little did she know this task would change her life and the life of viewers in Oklahoma. John Harrison, who was my boss, put me to work as a receptionist, a tour guide, and his assistant. Six months later, a promotion, co-hosting a talk show. Of course, it frightened me <laughs> because I thought, oh no. <laughs> I don't want to do that. People will be looking at me. <laughs> but she did. Joining the ranks of Ida B and Ho Ho the Clown, it was a big deal. There were no other African Americans in the station, and then I met the janitor. Jackson went on to do several shows here, mostly spotlighting the black community. Everything that people were seeing on television um, when it came to black issues, it was negative. And um, Oklahoma has a very rich black history. And I just felt that it was important that we take the time to incorporate some of the good things that was going on. And this role didn't come without criticism, often taking the brunt of racist feedback. People said when I first got on the air, um, get that blankety blank off the air. Um, why do you have her on the air? Her natural hair also a conversation, a topic that quite frankly was non-negotiable and for good reason. My hair has nothing to do with my brain. It's my hair, that's my hair. If my hair is a problem, then I don't need to be here. You could say the problem all started. Jackson went on to be a mainstay here for years, telling stories hard to hear. One in particular stands out. A young black man was hung because that was an area that had some problems with the KKK at that time. And so that story stuck in my head. Take it with a grain of salt. Aside from reporting, she opened the doors for others who look like her. In fact, she was personally involved in getting Ben Tipton here, another well-known face in the black community. Tipton was on the radio for years, but controversy would soon lead to his exit. Everyone in our community was quite upset because Ben was off the air uh, because he stood up for people that he was training and hiring. KOCO's head honcho wanted him. He ended up having a long-standing career here, one that included politics. Tipton has since passed, so we talked to his children about the legacy he leaves behind. He started as a reporter and then became the weekend anchor. In that role, Tipton created and produced the Black Review. I think it's important for you know African Americans to see people that look like them and feel like your story is being told. Both paving the way for this woman, Barbara Goche, KOCO's first black morning anchor, telling us while race is an ongoing battle, she felt embraced thanks to those who came before her. Because of them, her time here was solely about the job. The bombing, what sticks out the most. I believe I was the first television reporter on the scene. I was two blocks away when it happened. This story connecting the community in all its colors, creating a bond many believe changed the landscape of Oklahoma. Compassion for people at the center. It, it definitely you know, touched me, moved me, became a part of who, who I am um, as a 
as a reporter, as a person. And African Americans aren't the only ones KOCO added to their roster in trying to diversify talent. Native Americans, a big part of that. Enter Enoch Kelly Haney, former principal chief of Seminole Nation, a renowned artist who served in both houses of the state legislature, even a gubernatorial candidate once. But before all that, this. I've been active in community development for a long time, different capacities, and uh, somehow they, they, someone invited me to be a member of the uh, community um, um, board here. Which eventually led him to TV, speaking on behalf of his community. There was no one for Indians, and I'm saying, I, I guess I'm the one to say it. And I told him, I said, you know, I think, you know, you got more Indians here, and. Uh, than anything, I th you ought to have an Indian program. And so it began, the push to get Native American faces and stories on air. Pretty fantastic to be able to be representing Native American people and Native American women who wanted to do what I was doing for a living. Executive Director of the Historical Society and Ida B's son, Bob Blackburn, praising the very intentional push to create diversity within the KOCO news studios. This was not just about profit or market share. This was about we have responsibility to really build this community, to serve those people who are watching our broadcast. Saying it was imperative then, just as it is today. You still see it today at KOCO with the diversity. And it isn't lost on us 65 years later, creating diverse newscasts from our storytelling to our talent, making sure our community sees people who look like them. That's work in 2019 we are still committed to.